This was the view at the time of what it might look like in the terms of the Polar Silk Road. And I want to call your attention to the left-hand side. And you see the links from the rail all down. Yes, and links possibly into from Helsinki down into uh, Estonia is what we saw. And you also saw a number of links into various parts of, of the West. Yes. You also see on the right-hand side only four, only four cu countries and only 1.7 billion of the world's population. That's, that was October 19. Fast forward, October 21. The left is all gone. There's no link at all in part of this. There's nothing with Norway. There's nothing linked to the Baltics. All removed. However, look to the right. There's two power. There's Power Siberia 1, Power Siberia 2, and those two power lines, which cannot be sanctioned, will power up 90% of the power to Beijing and to Shanghai for the next 15 years via Russia. And you'll also see there are now seven countries involved in this. There's actually an eighth, which is Qatar, but I couldn't put it up because it only happened last week. But now it's 41% of the world's population. So it hasn't gone west, it's gone east, and it's gone south. Now, what's driving this is, is um, Russian liquid natural gas. And why am I talking about that? Because Russia, as we heard yesterday here, represented 2.5 million of the 4, 4 million people uh, within the Arctic. And Russia also represents one third of the landmass inside of the Arctic. So Russia is driving this as a Russian project supported by many other countries. On the left-hand side is what we put up uh, in October 19, those boxes there, you saw 20 million, 21, so 27 million of LNG. That was up from 11 million in 2016. What's the possibility of getting sort of 50, 55 million of, of, of LNG by 23, 24? The number now is 80 million by 24. And that's the same level of production as Qatar has. 